We'll go compile <laughs> something on a Raspberry Pi Zero W, and maybe by this yeah. time next week, <laughs> it'll be done. Hey, beautiful people, welcome back to another weekly Daily Wednesdays where we sit back, relax, take that bed, week break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux and open source. I'm Vince Stone, joined every week by Jill Bryant. We were just talking in the pre show, just catching up, see what's going on. Come check us out live if you get a chance over on Twitch. Link in the description. What's up? What's new? Jill, you got a new plushie, right? I do. So, my wonderful Is that the way to do Evan? it? You just show up and, like, here's a plushie? Yes. <laughs> Is that it? You're like, no, I don't know you. You're a stranger. And they just give you a plan. Like, come on in. Come on. I want, want something to drink. Oh, no. This is my uh, wonderful nephew who I love very much. This is uh, from nephew Evan. He actually came to my house and some surprised me last weekend with this cute plus penguin from one of my favorite games of all time, Genshin Impact. This penguin's name is Purs, and he is actually a clockwork penguin. So he's mechanical. And he's a companion made for the character Feminine in the game. He's so cute. All right. <laughs> Aw, thank well, you so much like again, Evan. Point. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And and my nephew had to get this for me because it's my favorite game and plush penguins. And uh, so I will put it him on display in my my penguin collection next to me. If you are a patron and you have access to the live and uncut. Not last week, but week before last, we were joined uh, by Civic. You might know him. You might love him. He was uh, the guy responsible for getting games like Skullgirls ported to Linux. Oh, that, yeah, that that's was right, Civic. Yeah. He joined us in the um, after shows and, and explained to myself and Jordan and Pedro what Genshin Impact was and something about a big giant train and how the Holoverse or Holoverse or whatever Ties together, yeah, <laughs> and um, it was a good time. So oh, good. <laughs> he threw all that down. Well, I'm just sitting here. We were talking in the pre-show. I, I got a little Raspberry Pi for the video viewers. It's blinking. It's it's at 100. I'm compiling something on this thing yeah. as a bit of a proof of concept. And I shot myself in my own pinky toe here because it's one of those situations where you try something, you get something started, and like 20 percent into it, and you're like, you know, if I'd done that the right way, it would have been eight times faster but it didn't. So you just wait it out. You're like, you know what? It'll finish. I have an idea for a video for interfacing Linux, but this has got to work first. And uh, we'll see. On the topic of hardware, we brought up the uh, Radza, right? The X4? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Pre-orders. Trying to get a hold to them. They don't exist. And I'm like, man, you know what? Hmm. What so happened I just, then? <laughs> just bring them up. I just ah. bring them up and I'm like, can I just buy a review unit? Hi, Tom. Tom, get back to me. I'm like, hey, nice. I got I got interfacing Linux. Got a YouTube channel just starting out. We're doing like 10,000, 20,000 views on these videos. And he's like, man, do not worry about it. I got you a review unit on the way when we get some more in stock because we're out right now, too. Oh. <laughs> so if you're sitting around waiting for your pre order, there's your unofficial status on that really neat x86 raspberry pi in 100 powered uh little block of awesomeness so i'm gonna get one of those to do on interfacing linux i'm kind of excited about that that should be a fun thing to play around with thank you all for liking subscribing and all that those numbers are dope to have when i go and say hey can we start getting review samples for stuff that we might be interested in and they go yeah sure here you go thanks i made it now yeah Let's jump into something that I play around with every Wednesday and every Sunday. Yeah. DaVinci Resolve <laughs> 19 is out. Black Magic Design has pushed this out. I've been using 19 since beta one, so I don't know, like maybe three, four months. And it does have a couple of features that I find really, really handy. Two of the big ones that uh, have helped my workflow in the release. Two of the big ones support for 44 one audio yeah. and <laughs> under linux and we now have the ability to export flack free lossless audio codec and previously i had to send everything out in wave because yeah. <laughs> we don't have support for aac under linux because reasons there's no technical reason for that it's always mm, mm, made me a little bit grumpy what that means is smaller file sizes in a sample rate that YouTube doesn't mind chewing on 
So the videos get processed a lot, a lot quicker. <laughs> Not one, but five UI layout stacks on the keyboard for remap because I do some crazy stuff with the keyboards for different shows, different projects. That's now a thing. They've done some work on the um, dialogue level there. So if you don't do quiet and you get too loud and you got multiple people talking, it does its best to try to sort that out for you right there in the program. It's getting a little bit better. I don't know if I'd recommend it for production quite yet. And something you might have noticed if you keep track of DaVinci Resolve, and I should say best nonlinear video editor on Linux, period. <laughs> There's no competition. It's not like Blender, where you got Blender and like, oh, well, like Blender can tango with Maya and all. There's nothing. Like DaVinci Resolve's over here in its own stratosphere, on its own planet by itself. Unfortunately, this release is the first one to, to support ARM64 and Windows, Yay. which gives me hope that we might see an ARM64 version for Linux eventually, at least one day down the line. Makes me kind of excited. And I still want to... I wish AMD had a better offering, because right now, like, the most budget card for AMD is, I think, the 6400, that little pro low-profile thing they have. Yeah. That was yeah. effectively a laptop card. Mm -hmm. I think that's the cheapest thing, and it's not that great a card. I need to pick up something like that to do like DaVinci Resolve on AMD on Linux, because I get a lot of traffic for people who have AMD systems. And, hey, what do I do? And I'm like... Oh, well, I was actually really impressed. I recently installed uh, Resolve 19 because I hadn't played around with the betas. The last one I had installed was 18. So what, what I found that was cool is you can now search across all the effects library folders and i always use a lot of effects <laughs> and um they're organized now and it just makes it so much more time efficient you know now that you can search them and your favorites are organized and they're all you know you can search in one location which is really nice and um there are new transitions and titles that i actually noticed that weren't mentioned in the official davinci 19 updates and one was called outline repeat which repeats the outline of text that you typed in across the screen. It's kind of an old school effect. And there's a really cool one called disarrange, which is a kind of swirling matrix transition from one clip to another. And it kind of does this little 3D effect and swirls it together. So, there's yeah, a I bunch of fun effects inside of DaVinci yeah. Resolve, even just to play around with, to go look yeah. at. Yeah, yeah. And... So it was nice to see some new ones, which I figured yeah. I would. There are. <laughs> There's definitely yeah. some new ones in there. I've like <laughs> looked at them like, ah, that's cool. And I like, you got to remember to like go back and play with them. All right. Now, as the title said, we're practically going to be giving away Risk Five tablets. Yay. This is awesome. So back in June here on LWW, we had talked about the world's first Risk Five laptop getting an upgrade made by Deep Computing. Well, now they have released the DC Roma Risk Five Pad 2 tablet. And it runs the Ubuntu desktop as well. The DC Roma Risk V Pad 2 tablet is actually powered by SpaceMint Keystone K1 8 core SOC, runs Ubuntu Desktop 24.04 LTS, and has a 1920 by 1200 resolution IPS display. It also has a 2 megapixel front facing camera and a 5 megapixel back facing camera and a headphone connector which is always nice <laughs> and you can pre-order the dc roma risk 5 pad 2 starting from 148 dollars on the deep computing website but it is only available in limited quantities so you, you better get it soon at that price <laughs> and uh Vent sound found some other options as well <laughs> well you we got a couple of things there man because when we're talking about the 149 price tag yeah which mm -hmm. that is you get 64 gigs of storage and you're like all right and four gigs of ram to run a desktop you're like oh that's some that's a tough constraint so <laughs> if we want to take that up to eight gigs we're at 199 just by adding you know an extra four gigajoules of memory ram and if you get the one that you probably want 16 you know 16 is a good yeah. minimum for 2024 in any form factor which this version is also upgradable to Android 15, AOSP yeah, build. I'm like, all right, nice. that's pretty cool. 
and might as well, you know, 64 gigs of eMMC, you know, that's your storage. Not too bad. If you want to wind it all the way up, though, and get 128 gigs, 299. Now, this is interesting. I mean, it's that latest mass-produced Risk Five SOC. Jill mm -hmm. said 1080p screen, which is decent. Be curious to see. I mean, it's going to be running the Ubuntu's. What the battery life is going to be like? That's my biggest question. Right after, yeah, the only serious question one needs to ask is: Can I play a 1080p YouTube video full screen? And here's what they mean by like Risk Five development. It is a development kit. This one's unique because of the form factor. It's a development tablet. Mm -hmm. You don't have to have like, you know, your little board floating around and kicking around on a desk somewhere. You have a nice little compact thing, plug in a keyboard, SSH into it, you know, however you want to rock and roll with it. So that's pretty cool. Good job, yeah. deep computing. Mm -hmm. You ever heard of mice? <laughs> Absolutely, Ben. Here's one right here. We call them gerbils here on that Linux is, Gamecast. Man. Here's mine. This is my forever one that I rebuilt. Uh, you can go check out the little thing I did on Interface in Linux. It's got a forever micro switch in it. Pretty easy to do, easy to tear down. That thing's going to outlive me. There's another type. Can't really call it a mouse. And it's been called the space mouse. Why, why has it been called the space mouse? Well, that's because it's a space mouse on the device. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's a reason for it. It looks about like that, right? I had to look it up real quick. And they come in different flavors. You know, they got the Enterprise version, the Pro version. It's the thing with the puck in the middle of it that you can wiggle mm -hmm. and sometimes juggle. They even have the Economy version, which is just the puck with, you know, the wiggles and the jiggles. But maybe you, you just wanted to print one out. Now you can. Six degree. Uh, there you go. Six DOF. When I say six DOF, I'm thinking about descent. Maybe these. Yeah, this is the ultimate descent <laughs> controller. We it just is. don't know. <laughs> See, now I'm trying to talk myself into building one and or putting one together. But this, people are going to come out of the woodwork. Is a guide to build one. This is called the Hall Effect Sensor CAD Mouse Space Mouse. Mm -hmm. There's even a GitHub page. Look at all that fun stuff. Yeah. Got a nice little video put together. All you need is a 3D printer, an Arduino, magnets, switches, nuts, and a couple of bolts and springs. You can't forget those springs. And apparently, this is like really warming because I get to the bottom of the GitHub page and the guy's like, of course, all you do is you reflash the Arduino to, with the, the brain logic to become a space mouse. This is like old hat. People have been doing this for a while. There's a bunch of projects for making these things. And I wanted to give this one a shout out because it's doing something a little bit different. Apparently there's a patent at uh, Space mm -hmm. Mouse, a 3D, 3D Connexion. Yeah. They have. That's the reason they're the only ones that have been making these things for 20 years. They got it locked down with well, the way it works. And so this guy decided to flip that up and use the Hall Effect sensors. You might have heard about that. People are like, ooh, does, it, does the uh, D-pad have Hall Effect sensors? And that's kind of the new thing right now because they don't wear down. And uh, I'm going to be honest, this has got way too many moving parts in it for me. I looked at it, I'm like, I could make that, but I don't know if I would want to. <laughs> uh, you know, when, when I saw this picture right here, uh, what we're looking at is just like mm -hmm. the base unit without the cover on it. And I'm like, that, that's more than $149 worth of my time right there. Cool. Very cool. Uh, the gentleman who put this together, a Chrome B. And he's like, I wanted to do one right, and he did. I think this is uh, pretty interesting, and it's going to work with uh, basically anything that uh, you could. Oh, look at all that spaghetti nightmare with the wiring. I would, wow. <laughs> kind of crazy. I'm down with it. I'm here for it. And there's the big bolt. Just one nice <laughs> big center bolt. Yeah. All the magnets. Love to see it. Love to see it. Still can't bring myself to buy one. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll end up building one, Jill. Yeah. Well, I've actually been been wanting, wanting to buy one. I, I, it, it, it's funny because when you put the story in there, it reminded me, oh, yeah, I still need to get one of those. <laughs> so, you know, I've always wanted to try a more modern version of a 3D, what we called 3D motion controllers. The early version of this, um, the Magellan. Yeah, yeah. Which was, uh, you know, serial based and, you know, it looked. 
There's one right huh? Yes. I <laughs> that up. played with that one, yeah. <laughs> so that was their first one. That was co-produced yeah. by with Logitech way back in the day. And I didn't have anything to fiddle around with one of those on, but that I wasn't terribly interested in. But it's just the amount of buttons plus the control. Like if they would replace that thing in the middle, like with just a jog dial, I'd buy one in a heartbeat. <laughs> Mm-hmm. If it supported MIDI and put an output, if it had Mackie control oh, yeah. on it, like yeah. give it to me, that'd be dope. But there it is. Yeah. Go, um, if you got one, like leave me a comment if you use something like this. Cause, you know, back in the day, I like I've done enough research to, you know, over the years to be like, at one point they had Linux drivers from 3D Connect. Yeah. 3D Connect. And yeah. Cause I know pe- people, um, actually I used it in Maya on Linux. Or actually, Unix before that, yeah. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. Let me know. All right. I was talking uh, on Linux Gamecast with Jordan. Jordan's got a problem, not with his neighbor. At least we don't think it's his neighbor. We just think it's somebody coming into the neighborhood, <laughs> snooping around, <laughs> being nosy, out. just like that trash can's not put up, and it's forty minutes past the time you're supposed to do that, and they're like filing <laughs> reports. With a city or the, I don't know if there's an HOA or like, why well, I forget. And Jordan's like, I don't know what this is. I was like, I need to put a camera outside to find out who it is. Well, you can do that at home now. Yeah, this, this is actually a way cool camera for that purpose. You know, how would you like to have a power over Ethernet powered camera? This is the Pi in the Sky camera based on the awesome Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4. And its specs is it has dual 22 pin 0.5 millimeter pitch camera inputs, passive PoE uh, power, HDMI UART connectors for troubleshooting, and a micro SD card slot. And look at it, it looks really cool. (laughs) I've been scrolling by it right now. Um, The main body is 3D printed, and the acrylic dome you can buy on eBay. On well, you could probably get on eBay too, but on Amazon very inexpensively and you will need a raspberry pi compute module 4 a v1 v2 or v3 raspberry pi camera module 15 to 22 pin camera cable to hook up to the raspberry pi and a ubiquity networks upoe at poe plus adapter for the full list of parts and where you can get them all, check out the GitHub page in our show notes. But it looks fairly simple to build. <laughs> so, it's easy to put up. I mean, especially yeah. if you're not trying to like weatherproof it or anything. You stick all this yeah. together, you run the script, their camera start. That's that's some Ben Stone so naming cool. right there. Cam start. SH yeah. done. Let's go. <laughs> and it's just using uh, uh, our PyCam vid, and which is easy enough to do. So pull it in over the network and you just put them all over, just get some tape, tape them up against your window from inside the house. <laughs> yeah. Get creative with it. Yeah. I thought that was uh, something I'd mentioned for anybody looking to like snoop on your own property, mm-hmm. which is a good solution. And I'm, I still don't trust power over ethernet. I have the singular power over mm-hmm. ethernet. Listen, unjustified fear of it too. I have no reason. I've never had anything POE go bad with me. and really the only thing i got is the access point but it still bothers me yeah <laughs> still bother i would feel better if like there was some like ul certification for like ether noodles yeah not, yeah i get it I, yeah I mean, we're not dealing we're, we're dealing with like 48 volts or whatever like big deal but you never know it's a great thing yeah like jill said go check it out in the show notes so you get a chance pretty mm-hmm. fun all right, beautiful people. That is going to. Oh, hang on. Let's see. Is it done? No, it's not. It's still going. Oh, it's still compiling. I see it. It's flashing. <laughs> it's blinking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the poor. It, it, it's at hundred. Is it still? It's at 100%? been stuck at hundred percent for a while. It's it's probably. Uh, it's you know, writing checking something. It. I have yeah. no idea. I have to get H top back open, and. <laughs> See what no uh, GCC still crank it away at something, man. Uh, yeah. Best of luck. Maybe it works out because that will definitely be a entertaining guide and video that will interest uh, tinkerers and gamers alike. Wink on mm-hmm. interfacing Linux. If you want to go check that out, you like the show? What we do? We got a web zone. 
go check out last week's uh, Linux Gamecast where we talk about Nobara. Yeah. I called it Nobra the entire time. <laughs> now, I set it up like right at the beginning there, and I, I said, I'm going to call it Nobra instead of, you know, Hotel Nobra oh, for the Nobera. whole reason. Yeah, and I <laughs> just assumed, and I made sure the timestamp was just a little bit past that. So nobody called me out in the comments. I'm disappointed in every single one of you. But <laughs> Well, we said it correctly last week on LWW. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, but I wanted this. Was, this was intentional. This was a yes. plan to try to fish some people. <laughs> nobody bit. So go check that out. There's some great comments on there for some uh, traumatized uh, Windows users screeching about, uh, you know, fake news that this couldn't possibly happen when, you know, they're clutching their Windows logos. But, hey, we got a support temp. Uh, if you want to become a patron, we got a bunch of stuff. Uh, we kind of throw your way as a big thank you access to our Discord. Trackmania server, we get together Tuesday and Friday, Tuesdays and Fridays and get our buddy together, have some fun, go race around some tracks. Uh, pre-pre-super shows and live and uncut versions of the shows, your name in the credits, and a big sloppy wet digital thank you. Yeah, yeah. you thought I was going to say kiss, right? And I'm like, no, just a <laughs> yeah. thank you. I don't know how I'm going to give you that big sloppy wet digital thank you, but we're going to put our top researchers on it. And thanks to everybody who is currently patron or supporting us on Twitch mm-hmm. and LibraPay and all the other places. Fun time. We get to do this each and every week right here on Twitch. Three Yay. M. Now, did we do time? Let's see. Yes. 31 minutes. Nice. <laughs> and it's going to confuse people when I say that because I always edit and trim it and, and, you know, try to get it like 25 minutes. You're like, wait, yeah, a minute, 31. Yeah. Hey, don't worry. Just go download. Oh, I did get the RSS feeds fixed for patrons for the live and uncut. That's been a problem oh, for a couple of weeks. Cool. Yeah. Because the show, we get the live and uncut. You get the pre show, the actual show, and the post show all in an mp3 plus you the video and those weren't coming in over the custom rss feeds they work now i have two people who i have the two people who were using them contact me they're like yes it works <laughs> good to see now speaking of thank yous it is time to roll some credits yay and do just that oh thank all our wonderful patrons including our advisors our theron and thank you, Optiplex Prime, for your 24-month Twitch shove, otherwise known as Justin in chat. <laughs> so I wanted to give a shout out to him. And to our our Sea Monsters, Treggy, <laughs> and our Death Notes, Leonardo, Martin, Nubbin, Chad, and our Chairlings, Mir PPC, Gamatron, Monica, Minus9. <laughs> I only got through a couple of those this time. All right, you gorgeous people. Get out there. Get up to something. Go go compile something on a Raspberry Pi Zero W. And maybe by this time next week, it'll be done. (laughs) Yes. All right. See you next week. Love you all.